Hello friends, this is Rupesh and I'm watching CVPNet's video series on C++ and today's topic is overloading function template in C++. So yes, you can overload function templates as you overload the normal functions. And this is the example of that. But before this example, let me go back to the previous videos example. And yeah, if you are totally new and don't know what is function template, then you should consider watching my first video which is about introduction to the templates in C++ and there I have explained these points actually discussed these points and given some example you might be thinking why I'm discussing the previous video the point is actually I forgot to mention one more thing in that video so I thought okay let's take that in this video so let's recap what is happening here you have this generic function which is a get max which will take t as a type and will replace this t with particular type what type you are passing in from this get max and this get max so this get max was passing integer because x and y both was integer okay so this you understood right but i forgot to tell you that there is no need of providing this data type when you are calling this function it can actually deduce the type for you by comparing and matching the types so no need of this type cast and we don't need this particular character passing okay so it will actually do that for you it will search okay i have this get max template function and it takes t and t so this t is at this point will be integer so this x and this y both are integer so this t is going to be integer so it can do that for you so no need to pass that data type when you are calling this function. I forgot to mention that. So let's compile and check that correctness. See it is working as it was working before. And yeah, in introduction part, I should have told one more thing that instead of this type name, we can use another keyword called class. So instead of type name, you can use class also. Let's compile and check. See it is working fine. Let's make it little more complicated by passing two different data type. This x and y both are of integer data type, right? What if I am passing one as integer, so one as 20 and another one as 30.5. So this second one is of type double, okay? So this is integer, this is double, both are of different data type. Now what should be the case here? Actually, it will fail to compile. Let's check that. See, it has given some warning. It is saying that cannot deduce and conflict the type t integer versus double. Exactly. So what is the option now? So you know that you can define two types. So let's call this t2 and let's call this one t1. So this is going to be t1 and this is going to be t2. And now we may return t1 or t2. So let's for now you just return t1 and save. Now let's try to compile and check. See it is working and it is returning 30. Why it is returning 30? Let's see that 20 is coming here. X is 20 and Y is 30.5 and T2 is deduced by double. So this T2 is double now. Now you are comparing X which is 20 is greater than 30.5. No it is not. Then it will try to return this 30.5 but it is going to return this 30.5 using t1 and you remember t1 was integer this 20 is integer okay so 30.5 became 30 because of this t1 and t1 was integer that's why you're getting this 30 here correct now you might be thinking well this another case is working c1 and c2 both are character type but i am taking t1 and t2 so it should be different, right? No, it is not required. When two parameters you are passing are totally different, then you should be taking them as different data types. But if they are similar and you are taking them in different data types, then it's okay. Actually, it is type deduction. So it will try to deduce this T2 and T1 with character only. Okay, so this is character, this is character when it is calling this function. But when it was trying to call this function and you had only 
T data type, not T1 and T2, so it was confused. Okay? There was a confusion between integer and double. So now there is no confusion. Now here you might be thinking that why I am not getting this 30.5? I am getting 30, right? And the actual behavior would be 30.5. So how to achieve that? Let's make this one as T2. So this is not correct way of dealing this, but for now it will work. See, now it is 30.5. But what if someone does this? Just copy and paste this and instead of this, I am passing 30.5 here and 20 here. Now what? Let's compile this. See, first one is giving correct output, but second one is still giving the wrong answer for you. So how to solve this problem? To solve this problem, we can pass a third data type, which will say that this is going to be the return type. So you know that the bigger data type from these two are double. Okay. So you can explicitly pass this double here and here. So now you're passing this double and let's take this double as third parameter. So we can take this class return type. So I'll call this RT. So this is going to be return type. So let's make this one return type. Save this, compile this. Okay, we got this error here. Okay, this error is because of this third one. So just remove this and try to compile it again. See, this time you're getting 30.5 and 30.5. This is what we expected. And if bigger item is integer, so let's make uh, this 30 and this 20.5. So this time this should return 30, right? So let's compile and check. See, it is giving 30. So this is a perfect code, but here you have to pass this double as return type. And you are assuming that this is the biggest data type of these two. So it can accommodate 20 as well as 30.5. So you are writing double here. It is okay. You can do this, but there is another way to solve this problem without sending this data type or the return type. And that is something like this. So for that, let's remove this double from here and this from here. And we don't need this return type. And yeah, I just forgot to mention one more thing. You might be thinking I'm just passing one double and why this double is going inside this return type? What about this T1 and T2? Actually it is auto reduce mechanism. So this double is the first parameter because you're not passing rest of the parameters. So rest of the parameters will be automatically reduced by the, I mean rest of the types will be auto reduced by the parameters type. So first is double. So this RT is double. This is going to be integer. So this T1 is going to be integer. This is double. So this is going to be double. So this is how it will work in this case. Okay. Although you can just specify all these things explicitly. So you can write integer, integer and double. And here you can write double, double and integer. This will also work. See, it is fine. Okay. So this first parameter is going to be the first parameter for assignment, I mean first type. Okay, so this is the mapping first, first, second, second, third, and third. And in case if it is not able to auto deduce, it will throw error. So I will not go into that deep. So let's remove this. And we were talking about how to make it work without giving the third parameter, I mean, what should be the return type? Because sometime return type is T1 and sometime return type is T2. So it is confusing. And we had to give the return type explicitly in RT as double. So it was working. But if you don't want to give that, then what is the workaround? And let me remove this. And there is this something called auto. This will try to reduce the return type automatically. So this auto will find the return type and deduce that type here. So let's compile and check that. Uh oh, we're getting this error. Uh, deduce return types are a C++ extension, 14 extension. Okay, my compiler is little old. It is saying that this mechanism is only available inside C++ 14. So till C++ 11, there was something called decal type. And inside this, you give this expression. 
control C control V and then this arrow so this shows that you are going to use a trailing return type mechanism so let's compile and check that okay now it is working see 13.5 and 13.5 in both the cases so this is C++ 11 I guess but in 14 you don't need this this is a extra headache right why you want to tell that declare a type of this expression so it will check it whether x is going to be the final result or y is going to be the final result and that will be reduced I mean deduced as written type here okay so this was a problem so let's remove this and now in order to show you that it is really working let's go to online compiler and I will show you that with this code is working so let's go to the online compiler here and I'll use ide1.com and this is C++14 copy that older code copy paste it here as it is no modification and if you are not able to see this let's increase the font size okay now you must be able to see this correct so the code is exactly similar we are trying to use this auto for return type so let's run this okay see it is working 30.5 and 30.5 and our compiler is c plus plus 14 okay so in 11 it was not working but in 14 it is working so this is the way of getting the return type if it is dynamic because sometimes x could be the bigger one and sometimes y could be the bigger one so our data type for return will change and you will achieve this change like this okay okay now so we are done with this so let's go back and start our main video topic so i haven't explained this function overloading in templates yet right so you might be thinking that i have taken so much of time to explain the basic one only but this is not going to take much time it is actually already ready so our main topic was overloading function templates in c++ so these are three functions max1 max2 and max3 so all are max this is non template this is template and this is template function and if we will call this max and yeah i'm using this scope resolution operator just to specify that this is not the internal max function i'm going to use my own max function here okay because there is one max function given by the library itself and by using scope resolution operator i'm saying that i want to use this max as the global scope here okay now if i'll pass this max 10.0 and 20.0 it should call what which one it will call see this is a normal function so this max will be called when you are calling with integer and integer this is a fixed function when you will call integer and integer okay there is no other way to call this function so this is double and double so you cannot call this one let's see this one so this is t and this is t and this is template function and it takes two argument and both are equal so this is t and t so it should be either double double or integer integer okay so it will call this function because this function takes three argument a b and c so see you have overloaded max function when you are using templates and there is no much difference only minute difference and you will understand those difference so this one is going to call this one i'll compile this but before that i should be explaining what is happening here now what about this one this one will also call this only because this is character so this time this t will be replaced with character so this is going to be character and this is going to be character now 10 and 20 this is going to call this one because this is total integer call and we are not using template call here so 10 and 20 this is going to be called this one now we are calling 10 and 20 but with this template sign which is saying that don't use this one search in template max function because of this sign it will search inside this or this 
So as this is taking three parameters, it will try to match the requirements. What is the requirement here? Both should be with the same type. So this is integer and this is integer. So t and t can be replaced with integer. So this is going to call this one. Okay. Now let's see this one. This is obviously going to call this one because first is you're calling a template function and this is three parameters and this is going to take only integer but as you are using template parameters it only calls template functions and we have only two template functions this one or this one so it will call this one and this t will be replaced with double now so double can accommodate 10 and 20 without any problem so this is going to call this one now this is very interesting because this code is interesting so it is obvious that it is going to call this function. Now inside this, I am calling another max and max two time. So see, this 10, 20 and 30 all are integer. So this t will be replaced with integer. So it is like this, integer, integer and integer. And as this is the first call, inside this, there is this another call. So this is also max, integer, comma integer call so this call is integer and integer because a and b both are integer okay so you remember when you was calling max with integer and integer it was calling this function so now this will call this function and as it is returning integer here so this full call will be replaced with one integer number so this integer with c which is integer so again it became integer and integer call and this time this is this max call so again it is integer and integer so it is again going to call this one okay so this function i mean this function call is one time this function call and two time this function call so you might have got the idea so let's compile and check the correctness of this function's calling so let's compile this okay so this one is calling the template version max tt so that we know it is going to call this one because this is double and double and we don't have anything for that and this is character character so this is also going to call this only see we are printing this max tt here and here we are printing max integer so third one which is 10 and 20 is going to call max of integer and integer which is this first one and make sure you are on the track okay so this is this call now let's look at this call so this is also 10 and 20 as this was 10 and 20 but this is a template call so it will search for template versions so we have only two template version of max so this is taking three parameters so we'll cross this only one is there and it suffice all the things what we need to call this function so we will end up calling this function. So this is the call we are getting because of this one. Now this again TT is coming because we are calling this with double. So again it will call this one. Now we can call our last T, T and T. So this is T, T and T and this is the call for this third function and two integer calls. Can you see this? I, t I told you that when I was explaining this to you that this function is going to call this one one time and two time this one so can you see that this function is calling this ttt version and then two time integer and integer so it was very simple right just i wanted to explain and highlight all the points maybe it is not all the points i may forget something so if you know something then please let me know in the comment section i'll be very happy to include those things in the next coming videos because i am going to create a series of templates and I would like to cover almost all the points from beginner to advanced not super advanced but from at least beginner to advanced so thanks for watching bye bye I'll see you in the next videos